I'm Naomi Zeven, a member of the Fairfax County History Commission, and I'd like to invite you to join me on a walk in local history. Historians say that in Virginia, everywhere you turn, you'll find out something new, and Bailey's Crossroads area is just that fact. We just had six markers all together here uh, in Bailey's Crossroads area, and I'd like to tell you about it so you can take a trip and come and see it. Now, our first one that I'm going to talk about is at Bailey's Crossroads, and it's about the Bailey's family. I'm standing right here on Maury Lane, which was the pathway, if you can see behind me, that brought the carriages right up to the mansion, which was over there by the Safeway. Hecaliah Bailey is the founder of Bailey's Crossroads. He was an entrepreneur, he was a drover, and he had a sloop. But the main reason he was known is he owned the second, third, and fourth elephant in the United States. His brother-in-law, Owen, owned the first. He made a lot of money by showing his elephant and his menagerie for 25 cents a ticket. His son, Louis, uh, was a partner in a circus over there in Alexandria. He, Lewis was the founder of a circus tent. Now I think, and other historians think, he must have been told by his father about this land here at Bailey's Crossroads. And being a shrewd businessman, he saw the crossroads and he bought it, uh, the 526 acres, in 1837. Lewis then just became a farmer. They both gave up circus life. Hecaliah went back to New York and built the Elephant Hotel, and Lewis stayed here and farmed with his wife and became a very wealthy man. And that is how Bailey's Crossroads was founded. The next marker I'd like to take you to is over there at Route 7. You go out the parking lot, turn right, and as you drive about 1,000 mm, feet, on your left would be a marker called Civil War engagements. During the Civil War in 1861, McClellan was camped all around here in Bailey's Crossroads, all the way down to Skyline. And that was with the Army of the Potomac. And Jeb Stuart was up there on Munson's and Mason's Hill. And they had some uh, fighting engagements right there at, at Bailey's Crossroads. And there were casualties in it, and that's why it's in the history book. Now, as we go further up, on your right at the next shopping center, you'll see Lincoln reviews the troops. Here's where McClellan had 50,000 soldiers march, the largest amount of soldiers ever up until that point marching. And they were doing that for morale reasons, and Lincoln came and watched it with his cabinet. And it is said that he went to the Maury Mansion afterwards for tea. The next marker I'd like to tell you about is a little bit further up, uh, across from Munson Hill Towers. On your right is Jeb Stewart on Munson's Hill. Jeb Stewart was a colonel at the time he was on Munson's Hill and he had his 1st Virginia Cavalry there and on Mason's Hill. He got a notice that he became general while he was on that hill, and they celebrated. That fort on Munson's Hill was the closest fortification uh, that the Confederates had throughout the war to Washington, D.C. We're going to jump now all the way to Seven Corners, and you go a little bit past Seven Corners on Sleepy Hollow Road, and there'll be a fire station there called Fort Buffalo Firehouse. And we have the marker there for Fort Buffalo. Fort Buffalo was a Union fort that Lincoln had surrounding the outer area to protect Washington. Uh, the uh, Union was there most of the time, and only the Confederates were there for a short time in 1861 reason that it's called Fort Buffalo is because the Union Army soldiers were from Buffalo, New York. And now for the last one, we come all the way back down to Bailey's Crossroads to Columbia Pike. Take a right on Columbia Pike and go all the way to the Governmental Center. There you'll see Mason's Hill. Now on Mason's Hill, it was an observatory and they could see, they had this big, big binocular and they could see into the windows of Washington. 
But Jeb Stuart was waiting for orders to go into Washington, but soon after three months, they were told to go back to Centerville, so they never did use that site. And now I'd like to introduce you to our Congressman Tom Davis. He does an outstanding job representing us here in Mason District. He is our biggest financial supporter in our history projects, and we couldn't do it without him. Welcome, Congressman Tom Davis. I've lived here just about all of my life. I'm 53 years old now, and my family moved here in 1953 when I was four years old from uh, Nebraska. Uh, the Bailey's Crossroads is a different area today than it was then when you had, uh, in those days, an old airport here. You had the drive-in theater. Uh, now it's high-rises and shopping centers. I think it's important to remember where we come from as a community, uh, where we are today, and I think that helps us in understanding where we're going in the future. Uh, a lot of us shared uh, that history over the last 40 or 50 years. A lot of people I knew when I was younger uh, still live here and their families uh, live here. I've always been interested in history. I studied under Henry Steele Cominger uh, in, in uh, college. He was my history professor at Amherst. My father had a doctorate in American history and taught college history. And uh, as Will and Merrill Durant said, uh, those who do not remember the lessons of the past are dem uh, condemned to repeat it. Uh, we need to understand what's happened in this area in the past, how we evolved to where we are. It gives us a better understanding and bearing of who we are today. Uh, the History Commission, I think, does a lot for this community by reminding Fairfax of our very, very proud history. Hi everyone, I'm Naomi Zeven from the Fairfax County uh, History Commission, and I'd like to welcome you all here on this exciting day of starting our our trail of our six markers and the famous Ed Bars who will be speaking soon. But before we start, I would like to special thank a few of the people that came in their attire. <laughs> um, the 17th Virginia, how about coming up, Terry? Yeah. <laughs> and what's his, your friend's name? Billy Squires. Billy Squires. <laughs> and now for the winning side. John Morose, uh, 20th Company E Main, and we had been entertaining the young people today, and they came from Leary School, which was quite exciting. Uh, and now I want to thank Pat Sauer and uh, Bonnie Fair Fairbanks, <laughs> who do living interpretations. She uh, goes around to the schools, and she is the widow, a Quaker widow, and this is her uh, mulatto washerwoman, and they are available to speak at your functions if you'd like. And we have lovely Shannon. Um, Shannon Stark here plays the piano and sings at the Lee Mansion, the Fennel House, and many other places. So we were very, very fortunate that they took their time to donate to come out to um, really teach the children. The 17th Virginia was made up of companies from the Northern Virginia area, Fairfax County, Prince William County, and Alexandria City. About how many men were in it? The average was about 100 men per company, 10 companies per regiment, so we're talking around 1,000 men. Um, the 17th Virginia began with, I think, 900 some odd men. What was the year it started? The 17th Virginia was formed in 1861 at the outbreak of hostilities between the North and the South. Who was the main general they were under? They were uh, spent a good part of the war under General Course in uh, Longstreet's Brigade. Course was part of Pickett's division in Longstreet's Brigade, or division. They went in, as I said, with about 900 some odd men at the at the um, surrender at Appomattox, there were only 294 men left. This is uh, one of our members of our company. We are Company A of the Alexandria Riflemen. This is Private Willie Squires, our newest recruit. How long have you been in this regiment? Uh, just about a year. I started uh, February, I guess. Or my first uh, event last year was in uh, Fort Ward, and it was about uh, Actually, it was June last year, my first event. How did you become <laughs> active in the 17th? Well, uh, the uh, Fort Ward in Alexandria conducted uh, a Living History Day there, Fort Ward Day, and uh, I was sort of interested in uh, the Civil War, and uh, I got recruited there at uh, one of their events that they had. 
something similar to an event that's going on today. Have you acted in any reenactment? Uh, yes, we uh, just participated in one this past weekend. Uh, actually, it was here in Fairfax County at the uh, Blunt the State. Well, how about bringing in their opposition now? <laughs> My name is John Morose, and I belong to Company E, 20th Maine. I've been a member of uh, 20th Maine about 12 years now. Have you been in any reenactment movies? I hear you've been in a big one. Uh, I was a member of the, I was a, uh, what was called a background artist for the movie Gettysburg. Now, there were thousands of us involved in the movie. And Maine was a big regiment, wasn't it? Do you call it a regiment or a company? The 20th Maine consisted of 10, uh, 10 companies, uh, about 50 men each. So, uh, so 20th Maine had about uh, 500 men. When you do reenacting, do you stay out all night and sleep in your tent? Oh yes, of course. Tell us about what it's like. Sleeping out at the night? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, in the large reenactments, there are uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe a couple of thousand reenactors, actually on both sides. Uh, 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 the tents are formed in what is called streets. Each street consists of one company. It's like a small city. It's like a small city. And it's well organized. Uh, there's water supply there and firewood and that sort. Is it true you stay in character the whole time and talk about the period that you're living in and cook exactly the way they did in those days? Uh, only when the only when visitors are there. Time the second line fires. Now maybe Maybe the first line is already loaded. So at that point, the second line fires. There's another way of doing it. Okay, you're shooting by column, right? This is one column, this is two columns, three columns. So here we go, and I first of all would like to introduce our wonderful supervisor, Penny Gross. Uh, I cannot thank Penny Gross enough. I'd like to tell you that she is responsible for the two videos that the county board um, approved and that we did for Channel 16 on the Civil War in Fairfax County and George Washington in Fairfax, and we wouldn't have them if Penny hadn't uh, supported them. She also has paid for the marker out in front and she has been nice enough to make up this program. We love Penny and we're so proud that she's our supervisor. Good afternoon and welcome to the Mason District Governmental Center. I'm sure it looks a lot different now than it did at the time that the actual activities were happening that we are commemorating today. I am delighted to welcome you here for another dedication of our historic markers. Uh, certainly the History Commission in Fairfax County has taken on this challenge 
with gusto. Um, we have dedicated a number of markers in Mason District over the last couple of years. This is um, another milestone, if you will. As we remember history, we also create history. And so I want to thank Naomi Zeven for spearheading this. And now I want everybody to get comfortable because we're in for a real treat and Naomi's going to tell you about it. I'd like to introduce the famous Ed Bars. We have a hero in our midst because I've always said that Ed is a true hero and is considered a treasure of the, um, of the country. Ed never says no to anybody. He, is, he feels everybody is equal that's interested in history. People are changing history today, taking down land and changing history. So we felt we had to get it into concrete in more ways than one because even if they knock these markers down they are listed in the state. So now we have our own little um, niche here at Bailey's Crossroads that wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for Ed Barth. It's a pleasure to be out here and this represents a project of government represented by your forward-looking supervisor who loves history, Penny Gross represents Naomi, represents the Fairfax uh, History Committee, represents good people of Fairfax County that have worked together. This is how history succeeds uh, by partnerships. It enables why with these markers, although the progress has eaten up many of the fields, it enables people to reflect and associate time with place. It enables you to stand or walk in the footsteps of history. Now, Fairfax County is much different than it was back in 1861. But Columbia Pike, then as now, was a principal thoroughfare, leading from near the Potomac River out into the county. And nearby, it's even older than the Columbia Pike, was the Leesburg Pike. And these two roads crossed at what became Bailey's Crossroads. And at, at the time of the Civil War, armies were far more road-bound than they are today. And in the, and of course, war will come to Fairfax County on, Ju on May 24th, 1861. The Lincoln government wanted to wait before they took any hostile action, although the Virginia Convention had voted Virginia out of the Union, the Virginia Convention determined to allow the qualified voters, that would mean none of the ladies would get to vote, the freeholders allowed to vote, would go to the polls on the 23rd day of May and vote to endorse or reject the actions of the secession convention. Except in Western Virginia, the voters endorsed the actions of the convention. And immediately at midnight, Union Naval and military, uh, Naval and Armed Forces moved into Fairfax County. Now a natural place for Union troops to take position in Fairfax County would be at Bailey's Crossroads, a site that is, uh, was located on a key road junction, already uh, known for the Baileys who lived there, which we have a historical marker to commemorate the Bailey family and Moray, and put the record straight about their relationships because of the research that uh, Naomi and the committee have done their true re relationships with Mr. Barnum. So we have Union troops in this Mason district early. So Lincoln had, had called for volunteers. 
and the troops that come into Fairfax County answer Father Abraham's call for men to serve for 90 days. And when Congress comes into session, Mr. Lincoln puts the Union forces under pressure to do something because their 90 days are going to be up. And when the Union armies march in three columns out to Manassas, many of them will pass through Bailey's Crossroads, through the area of the Mason District, and will return much faster on the night of the 21st and the 22nd day of July, returning in 24 hours what it taken them two and a half days to cover on the outward march. Shows that you can retreat much faster than you can advance. Now with the Union forces falling back into Fairfax and Arlington counties and Alexandria, back into the fortifications, hauling briefly up there at what is now Seven Corners, and uh, throwing up some light works. They will soon abandon the area and the Confederate forces arrive in the Mason District in Arlington County and take position. A number of years ago, people like to walk in the footsteps of history, will erect at Munson's Hill a historical marker to tell the story of the Confederates' arrival in the Mason District and the erection of a strong point on Munson's Hill where the dashing Confederate cavalryman James Ewell Drown Stewart as his headquarters and where he is informed that he has been promoted from Colonel the Brigadier General. And at Mason's Hill, excuse me, at Munson's Hill and nearby Upton's Hill, just across the county line in Arlington County, Confederate flags are flaunted. McClellan is a, is a wonderful man in one way. He writes his wife every day. His wife might have been well advised for McClellan's reputation to have destroyed letters because you write things in letters to your wives that sometimes might be interpreted different by the general public. As McClellan will describe it, as he rides forward, he sees a group of officers mounted coming toward him. The officers, McClellan is a short man. These men are large men both in height and well endowed in girth. These are, as they get closer, he sees one is General Irwin McDowell and the other one is John Pope. As they ride up, they pause as they approach each other and exchange greetings. As McClellan will tell his wife, suddenly they hear firing in the distance. And Pope and McDowell will continue toward Long Bridge and Washington and McClellan. You always see your light yourself and your best light when you're writing to your wife. And he will remark, as he recalls it, the sound of the guns. I ride to the sound of the guns. So again, another sight forgotten except for the name of the fire inch station there. Fort Buffalo remembered. The History Commission, with the enthusiastic support of the good people, of Fairfax County and Northern Virginia are ensuring that these sites will not be forgotten. Thank you. 
And now we're going to do the dedication in the front of the building. I would like um, uh, Supervisor Gross and the members of the uh, Fairfax County History Commission and Ed Vars to pull the uh, rope. Is everybody here? Pull, 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 pull. Ah! 